what is DFE and why do we flash it? If you haven't already subscribed, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon to get notified of new videos. Hey peeps, what's up? Manchi here, back with another video. And in this video, I wanted to talk to you about DFE, aka Disable First Encryption, and why do we flash it? For starters, Disable Force Encryption zip file is needed only for those of you whose device is not encrypted. How do you find whether your device is encrypted or not? Well, you can go into settings and then you click on the search bar on the top or the bottom and you search for encryption. As soon as you type in encryption or the first few words of encryption, you will see that you get encryption and credentials. Click on that and it will tell you whether your phone is encrypted or not encrypted. On your screens, you can see that we have the Poco F1, which is not encrypted, and the Google Pixel 3a, which is encrypted. Now, why do people decrypt their devices? It is a security issue, but people like me who flash a lot of custom ROMs on their devices, we don't want to, you know, get our device encrypted while switching between ROMs. Even though there are a lot of ROMs which support encryption out of the box, and you can install them without having to flash DFE but if you flash a lot of custom ROMs and you switch between a lot of custom ROMs it is just a safety measure so that you do not get encrypted while switching custom ROMs. Why? Well that is because if you get encrypted then you will lose all your pictures, videos, anything else which you have on your device and the only way to fix that would be to do a format data from twerp recovery. So this is the reason why we flash DFE. Now, when should you flash DFE or disable first encryption? A basic rule of the thumb, which you should remember, is that every time you flash a new vendor, you should flash a DFE zip file. Now, this vendor could be an external zip file which you are flashing, which is vendor only, or the vendor could be baked into a custom ROM. Here on screen are three different variants of disable first encryption zip files which you will find floating on the internet so we can start off with the last one which is fccrypt underscore disabler dot zip so if you unzip this file you will have another folder called fccrypt underscore disabler which is to be very precise the name of the zip file inside that you have two folders you have meta inf and you have vendor so in vendor and etc if you go and have a look at this file which is fstab dot qcom let me just rename this to dot txt and then we should be able to see the contents of this so here it is these are the contents of the file and over here you have the partitions so if you have a look at user data this is the partition which is generally encrypted other partitions might also be encrypted i'm not sure on those so what this specific dfe does is that it will replace this file in a path which is specified in the updater script we'll have a look at that as well but that is what this version of DFE is doing. So we can go back to fccrypt disabler and then go to the path where you have the updater script. So this is the updater script. We can rename this to .txt as well and now we should be able to see the contents of this one as well. So these are the contents of the updater script file, right? UI print is what you see on the screen and what this is doing is it is just replacing the file so it is just extracting the file at the path in vendor so which is why we are flashing disable force encryption every time we change the vendor this is one version of dfe we'll have a look at the other two as well so let me delete this fccrypt disabler and you can also delete this file because we don't need it i have a backup of it then you have disable force encryption zip this is the one which we use in or which we use on poco f1 let me unzip this as well and if we go into this file, we have same two different folders. We can go inside the updater script first and have a look at that. And we can have a look at the contents of this text file. What this version of disable force encryption is doing is that it is executing a script file which is in slash temp and the name of the file is fix.sh. That is what this zip file is doing. So we'll have a look at the fix.sh file. So we will go inside this folder go inside temp and bam there you have it your fix.sh file let me open this file so that we can have a look at what it is doing 
and this is the content of fix.sh file all this is doing is it is finding force encrypt replacing it with encryptable it is finding force fde or fbe and replacing it with encryptable and it is trying to find file encryption replacing it with encryptable the file it is looking for is f stab star so again in if you remember the previous one also had f stab dot qcom and the path is still the same vendor slash etc so again you have to flash this once you have flashed a new vendor so now we are left with only the top disable force encryption zip file let me delete the other two and now let me unzip this file as well and we can go inside this folder now this file is a bit different because it has logic to do things based on the name of the zip file i'm not a pro at shell scripting but that is the logic which i found inside this one so we'll open the file and then we can go inside meta inf and look at what the update script looks like we'll rename this to dot txt so that we can open it in a text editor and bam this is what we get update binary is a shell script which means this is just a dummy file the main logic is elsewhere and i will show you where it is so we can go back inside this folder and you can go into tools and we'll have a look at this file util underscore functions dot sh so this is your util underscore functions dot sh which means it is a shell script file and if i am correct this is where you have the logic for disable force encryption again it is doing the same thing it will search for this two words fec or force encrypt and replace it with space so basically this one is removing the word fec or force encrypt that is what this one is doing the path should still be the same vendor slash etc or could be in vendor as well again i'm not a pro at shell scripting but that is what i understood from what i have read over the internet so basically what we are trying to avoid here is that once you have decrypted your device right if you flash a new vendor or a new rom which has a vendor baked in you might get your f stab file as you know the data partition would be mentioned as encrypted but your device was not encrypted the new rom with the new vendor had it marked as encrypted and when you rebooted your device it created a big mess which is why if your device is not encrypted every time you flash a new rom or a new vendor make sure you flash disable force encryption so there it is peeps this video should give you some understanding of what dfe zip files are why we flash them and when to flash them it is a good idea or a good practice to know what you are flashing rather than blindly flashing stuff and that will do it for this video i hope my video helped you likes shares and subscribes are appreciated feedback and comment more than welcome see you when i see you